Gold Roger, later we find out it is Gold D. Roger is the Pirate King, known for his enormous wealth, fame and power, is giving a speech before his public execution, announced to the crowd that he had left all his treasure at a certain place, resulting in the world to enter the great age of pirates. 11 years later, red haired pirates arrive to a small port village called Fuchsia Village. This is where we meet the main protagonist of the series, Monkey D. Luffy. A happy, adventurous boy with the main ambition of being king of the pirates. Luffy looks up to Shanks, the leader of the red haired pirates. Every time these pirates return, Luffy berates them, demanding them to allow him to be part of their crew. On this occasion, Luffy takes on a drastic strategy, deciding to stab his face to show how courageous he is. Like usual, Red Hair Shanks declines. A group of bandits enter the bar and their mean leader, Haguma, demands alcohol. Bartender tells them that the alcohol is fresh out due to the Red Hair Pirates. Shanks offers Haguma a bottle for free. Haguma smashes the bottle over Shanks' head. How did Shanks respond to this? Shanks apologizes and cleans the mess. Haguma continues to make a mess, tossing around dishes before leaving the bar. A few seconds goes by, absolute silence. Nobody moving a muscle until all the red haired pirates burst out laughing. Luffy witnessing all this is furious with Shanks. Allowing to be a pushover, Luffy starts storming off to catch up with Haguma to give him a piece of his mind. Shanks grabs Luffy's arm, but for some reason, it continuously stretches more and more. While nobody was looking, Luffy ate something that was in a treasure chest that belonged to Shanks and his crew. Luffy ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi, which translates to rubber rubber fruit. This is one of the two important power systems of One Piece. Devil Fruits give very powerful special abilities, such as being able to swim in the ground, copy people's faces, turning into an elephant, and tons more. Even 1000 plus episodes of One Piece, there seems to be no end in sight. New Devil Fruits keep being introduced, each being unique. So Luffy now being a rubber man will mean nobody else can until he dies and the devil fruit respawns nearby. Side note, later on certain people achieve the impossible, creating artificial devil fruits. Shanks informs Luffy about the devil fruit side effects. He won't be able to swim in seawater, which would be fine for somebody like me or you, but this is a detrimental disadvantage for pirates sailing the seas. Another side note, later on we are introduced to fishmen, the side effect is void, so they can be a devil fruit user and still swim. One day the bandits return, kidnapping Luffy. See this epic scene of Shanks. Well, now that you've drawn your pistol, do you plan to actually use it? What? I'm holding it, ain't I? What I'm trying to tell you is the guns aren't for making threats, they're made for actions. Huh? Haguma, like a cheap magician, throws a smoke screen bomb, taking Luffy out to water to drown him. Kicks him off the boat, Haguma gets eaten by a giant fish monster. These are known as the Sea Kings. Luffy can't swim now because he is a devil fruit user. Shang saves him just in time. Loses an arm, turns into Dwayne The Rock Johnson and scares off the Sea King. This stair is more significant than you think. The second power system is Haki which you can ignore at the moment. This was just a short teaser of one of the three types of Haki. Sentimental moment where Shanks gives his straw hat to Luffy and tells him to return his hat once he had surpassed him. Time skip 10 years later, Luffy sets sail on his big adventure to become the next Pirate King. Alone on a small rowboat, punching the exact same Sea King that took Shanks' arm Luffy's objective is to gather 10 crewmates. Whirlpool suddenly appears. With only a barrel in his small rowboat, Luffy finds refuge inside. Pan to a nasty, ugly lady. Emphasis on ugly. It becomes a comical reference with the unexpected turn of events in the Logetown arc. Iron Mace Alveda is very abusive, especially to one crew member. This crew member is Kobe working as her cabin boy. How did this pushover, innocent, goofy looking boy 
become Alvida's subordinate. He went fishing, wrong place, wrong time. That is literally it. He accidentally boarded a pirate ship. She said, yoink, you are mine now. Kobe moves a barrel that washed up on the beach. Boom, out comes Luffy. Alvida gets notified that there is an intruder. She anticipates it must be the fearsome bounty hunter, the infamous pirate hunter, Roronoa Zoro. Luffy tells Kobe about his desire to become king of the pirates and how gutless Kobe is for not wanting to escape from Alvida. Kobe freaks out about Luffy's impossible dream, punches Kobe. I've set myself to become the king of the pirates and if I die trying, then at least I tried. Kobe is astonished about Luffy's mentality. What guts, what determination. That bolded word, determination, desire, dream, might be the foreshadowing of a mystery that to this day, 1,100 chapters in, is not revealed. Kobe states his dream is to join the Marines. Alvida comes bursting in, suspecting Roanoa Zoro. Luffy, brutally honest, calls her ugly, shocking everybody, especially Kobe, which is having his near fifth heart attack in the last two minutes. Kobe grows a spine, and even he calls her ugly. Luffy goes Saitama mode, one punch and saves Kobe. Luffy's first crewmate on his wish list is going to be the pirate hunter Roanoa Zoro that is currently imprisoned at the marine base. Arriving at the marine base town, the mere mention of Roronoa Zoro puts the locals into a frenzy, scared out of their minds. Luffy peeks over the wall, finding a man tied on a cross. It was the man he was searching for, the pirate hunter. He has been tied for nine days. A random little girl comes over, giving Zoro rice balls. He declines. But Chin walks in, Halmipo, Captain Morgan's son, stomping the rice balls, comes to revelation that Halmipo said to Zoro if he can survive out there for an entire month, then he can go free. But Chin leaves. Luffy comes face to face with Zoro for the first time. Zoro asks if Luffy can pick up the stomped on rice ball mush with extra dirt seasoning. Tell her it was delicious and I ate it all. Luffy and Kobe meet up with the girl. She tells them how Zoro saved her from Halmipo's mean dogs that caused chaos in the town for everybody. Halmipo walking through town with everybody bowing down on their knees saying how stupid Zora is for believing he will set him free. Luffy, punch. Butchin calls his daddy. Luffy tells Zora about how Mipo is not going to hold up his end of the bargain. Zoro tasks Luffy to fetch his most prized possessions, his swords. A statue is being erected of Marine Captain Axe Hand Morgan. Luffy accidentally breaks the statue, finds three swords, but which one is Zoro's? Now, enraged Captain Morgan orders for Zoro's execution. Flashback to Zoro's backstory. As a kid, Queena, a girl, would always beat Zoro. With a totaling record of 2,000 for Queena and him, big fat zero. No matter how angry it made Zoro, it continuously fueled his motivation to train more and even duel yielding two swords. Queena would still always get the better of him. Queena is the best swordsman out of all the children in the village by far. She breaks down one night knowing very well, no matter how skilled she is with a sword, every boy will eventually overtake her due to puberty when they grow up. Simply because men are much stronger leaves Queena feeling hopeless. Zoro and Queena make a promise that someday one of us will become the greatest swordsman ever. The very next day, she is dead. She fell down the stairs. This flashback motivates Zoro to not have his journey of becoming the greatest swordsman to end by the hand of a tyrant marine captain. The marines shoot, but Luffy stands to shield Kobe and Zoro in the nick of time. Being a rubber man, the bullets ricochet off him. Luffy hands over three swords, not knowing which one is his. 
But my man Zoro is not a mere bland swordsman. He uses the Santurio three sword style. And unfortunately, no, the third sword is not in his butt. Zoro agrees to join Luffy's crew as the deal was to get his swords. They defeat the Marines and Captain Morgan. Halmipo got Kobe as a hostage. The four kids version of One Piece replaces this gun with a rubber toy hammer. Luffy long range gomu gomu no pistol. Captain Morgan stands back up. Zoro got Luffy's back starting off a great partnership of the newly assembled nameless pirate crew. Zoro and Luffy about to set sail but before that a touching moment. Kobe and the Marines salute the two pirates thankful for stopping Captain Morgan and Halmipo that left a horrible stain towards the marine name. Kobe from being a cabin boy for a pirate to a new recruit and reaching his goal of becoming a marine. 